Hey everyone, welcome to tonight's Onward Productions Fireside. I'm Mandy Johnson, my husband and I own Onward Productions and I'm excited to be your host tonight. Um, just while we're waiting for everybody to get on, I just wanna ask where everybody's watching from, if you wanna just comment below, in the comments, about where you're watching from. And hopefully the weather where you're at is swell and dandy. Like we're, we're uh, hosting this from Montpelier, Idaho, which is like 20 minutes north of Bear Lake. Um, on the, we're on the Idaho side, the side with the best beach is what we always say for those of you that are familiar with Bear Lake. Um, anyway, it's been super hot for here. Uh, it's been in the 90s this week, super hot. So I'm not sure what the weather's been like where you're at, but um, hopefully it's been good. Uh, I have a son that's serving a mission in North Carolina. Luckily, he's on the westward side of the state. Um, there's, you know, some tropical movements going over there and hurricanes and different things like that. So hopefully where you're at, it's nice and pleasant. Um, I just, uh, I'm excited about our event tonight. We do these live. We're, uh, we're from our home from our, we're actually in my kitchen right now is where I'm at. I don't really have an office that's very secluded. So you may hear like lots of noises in the background, kids or dogs or something like that. So I apologize in advance, but we are live. Um, we appreciate all of you that are coming on to, to watch these firesides. We love doing them and we, we learn so much. And it's been amazing even through this pandemic to see, um, you know, we can't meet together in large groups right now, but we can get, meet together and in our heart and our mind and these firesides really do kind of bring some unity and some hope and, and goodness to our into our homes and we're grateful for all of our presenters that present and take time out of their lives to do this um especially on sundays you know we don't we don't do the pre-recording thing at least not now um maybe we'll look into that into the future but we um yeah we're just we're live we're in our homes and it is what it is so um, tonight's theme uh, we came up with is about covenants. Um, when we were baptized, we promised to take um, Jesus's name upon us. And, you know, we, when we make that decision, sometimes when we're eight years old, we, um, you know, kind of forget about those real purposes. And that's why we have the, the sacrament every week to remind us of that. And every week when we take the sacrament, we are promised or, we're, or we commit to be willing to take his name upon us and and remind us because we have this um, this brain uh, that's amazing, but it's it's mortal and it forgets things. So um, luckily we can we can renew our covenants every single week, but we need reminders of those and and the reason why. And so that's kind of what we decided to come up with the theme for for this week is taking His name upon us. And when I think about that and how I always have taught my family and and friends is um, when you wake up in the morning and you get dressed, um, we like football at our house. We like all kinds of sports, but I always think of it like a football jersey. That like when we when we get up in the morning, we're putting Christ's name on the back of our of our jersey that we're wearing throughout the day. And if we have that thought in our mind, then it's going to be a lot easier for us to be more like the Savior, be more Christ-like, and be more kind and tolerant and and help fulfill all the promises that we made when we were ba baptized. So um, anyway, I'm excited to hear from our presenters tonight. Tonight we have Anthony Sweat and Chad Hymas, and um, I'll introduce them in just a minute, but I'm just gonna start off with an opening prayer that I'll give. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for this opportunity that we have to meet together on this Onward Productions virtual platform to hear the messages that are being delivered tonight by um, Brother Anthony Sweat and Brother Chad Hymas. And we pray for their spirit to be with them and with those that are listening, that they will be um, able to deliver the message and that it will be received in a way that is pleasing unto thee. And we pray, Heavenly Father, for peace to be in our hearts and our minds and as we move forward through life in this unprecedented time and 
Um, we pray for the, the for blessings to be poured upon those that are seeking thy help and and need thee at this time. And we're grateful for our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the life and love and example that he offer is and offers to us every single day. We pray that we'll be able to remember him and and be more like him and be mindful of him, of him as we go throughout our days and out our lives. And we love thee so much and we thank thee for all things. And we say these things in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm excited to introduce our first speaker tonight. It's Anthony Sweat. Okay, all right. So Anthony is, uh, he's the wife of Cindy. Is that your wife's name, Anthony? That is my wife's name, yes. Okay. And you have seven kids? Yep, that is true. Okay, we'll, and what we'll, are their ages? We'll claim every one of them if we're being good. <laughs> awesome. Okay, Tony is an author, he's an artist, a teacher, he's a professor of church history and doctrine at BYU. Uh, some books that I love, uh, Tony's are uh, Seekers Wanted. That's, is, that, is that your newest? Do you have one newer than that? Yeah, that's my most recent one. Okay, um, Christ in Every Hour, and then The Holy Invitation, Understanding Your sac Sacred Temple Endowment, and that's what I excited maybe we can touch a little bit on some of the things that you wrote in there as we're talking about covenants i don't know what you have planned exactly but um we kind of switched some things on you today but i'm so glad you're just so awesome enough to to be prepared and be ready to speak on whatever we need you to and whatever the spirit directs you to do so um, well, thank you I'll, Mandy. Turn, I'll turn the time over to you thank you so much so excited to be with each of you virtually i Pray the Spirit can be with us. I know, even though we're not uh, in the same location, uh, the Spirit testifies of truth, and it can testify of truth no matter how it's delivered. Uh, technology, in person, written word, in art, music, nature, uh, or even over a, a, a live webinar like this. So I hope you'll listen uh, with the Spirit, and I hope I can teach with the Spirit to share something that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, with you, and that's about uh, why we make covenants and the need for covenants. Uh, I want to teach you some history. I want to teach you some doctrine that if you and I grasp it, it, it fundamentally will change our lives. Um, one of the reasons why this uh, matters to me so much is let me start by asking a hypothetical question. If I asked you the question, if you died and were judged today, what kingdom do you think you would go to? The celestial? the top, the terrestrial, the middle, or the telestial, the bottom? Now, don't answer out loud. Um, just answer in your mind. Don't answer for your brother. We, we know where he's going. Um, the reason why I ask that question is because I've surveyed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds um, of Latter-day Saint youth over the years and asked them that question. And surprisingly, of the three kingdoms, celestial, terrestrial, and telestial, um, which one do you think is chosen the most often in general? And by the way, I've surveyed at youth conferences, at firesides I've spoke at, especially for youths at you know, just different venues in seminaries. Um, so these are good, uh, these are good youth. They're at those events, they're doing their best. Um, well, the one that's selected the most often is the terrestrial kingdom. Um, roughly, and the numbers change depending on the sample, but in general, and by the way, they change by age. I'll tell you about that as well. Uh, in general, about 50% uh, of our youth think that they'll go to the terrestrial kingdom, the middle one. About 30% think that they'll go to the top, the celestial, and about 20% think they'll go to the bottom, the telestial. Um, now, here's the problem with that. Uh, when I asked follow-up questions and surveys and had them write the responses and said, explain to me why you wrote what you wrote, why you, why you thought the kingdom you'd go to. In general, these were their responses. They would say, well, um, I'm not a terrible, terrible, terrible person. I'm not like a murderer. Um, people literally said that. So I don't think I'll go to the telestial kingdom. 
But then they would say this, but I'm not perfect or I've made mistakes or I've got problems and flaws, shortcomings, issues. In other words, I'm human. So they say, so I don't think I'll go to the celestial kingdom. So good thing God made a middle kingdom for normal people uh, uh, because that's where I'm, that's where I think I'll go. That's their logic. And I'm here to tell you that's not gospel logic. That's not our doctrine. That's not what we believe. That's not what we teach. And it all comes back to covenants. Um, I'll return back to that in a second. Uh, I one time was speaking about covenants and teaching about it. And um, I had a kid raise his hand. And when I was doing a little Q&A and the, and the kid said, Brother Sweat, what if, what if like, the last thing I say is a swear word right before I die. And I said, well, what do you mean? And he goes like, what if I die in some sort of an accident? And the last thing I say is, oh, beep. Uh, and he said, and I, and I die with the swear word coming off my tongue. And then he said, I literally would have blown it at the last minute. And I said, oh, no, you wouldn't have, brother. You'd be just fine. And he looked at me and, and he was puzzled by that. Um, and he was like, oh, so swearing's fine. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying swearing's okay. Uh, but the idea that I have to be perfect to go to heaven is also not okay. And it's not doctrinal. It's not scriptural. One of the areas where I really admire our evangelical uh, sisters and brothers from, from different Protestant faiths is if I was in a room of a thousand Protestants, and ask them if you died, would you go to heaven? Uh, they would say, amen, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And I think we have something to learn from them, from that. Uh, they have supreme confidence in salvation through Christ. And I think that's admirable. Uh, if I say to a group of Latter-day Saints, do you think you'd go to heaven? We get a bunch of, well, it depends. Um, I'm not quite sure. Uh, so let me explain why I think that happens, why I think uh, we need to adjust our thinking a little bit and why covenants matter so much in that. Now, a little bit of history. One of the reasons um, why covenants matter and why you and I are unique and a little different from Protestant Christians is because for the most part, Protestants say all you have to do is believe in Jesus and you'll be saved. And we don't believe that. Uh, we don't, uh, that's not our doctrine. That's not what's been revealed through the prophet Joseph Smith. Um, you have to understand, going back in Christian history a little bit, I'm going to give you a real simplified version, which means it's leaving out a lot of, of subtleties. But the simple version of it is this. The Catholic Church uh, had priesthood and different ordinances or sacraments you had to do. There was a person who came along in the 1500s named Martin Luther who uh, protested against the Catholic Church. In essence, wrote 95 areas where he thought the Catholic Church had strayed from the Bible, nailed it to, the, to a door of a chapel, started the Protestant, the protesting revolution. And one of Luther's big things was we don't need priesthood and sacraments because we're because the church is wrong. And so in his logic, he was like, I can never measure up. I can never, ever, ever measure up to everything that's expected of me. And in his summary reading of the scriptures, he came to the conclusion that all you needed to do was uh, believe in Christ and be saved by his grace. And that the way you get uh, saved by his grace is by just confessing that you believe in Jesus. It doesn't have anything to do with your works, anything you do. So that is kind of one of the basis of the Protestant movement, the Protestant Reformation. So that leads a lot of people to say, well, we don't have to require anything of anybody uh, to be saved. They don't, they don't have to do anything other than accept Christ in their heart. That leads all the way up to the time of Joseph Smith. Some churches, churches were teaching different things. And in the sacred grove, when the Lord came, when Joseph said, which church should I join? 
the Lord spoke to Joseph and said something interesting. He said, Joseph, these churches have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. Now that sounds like a big statement, but let me clarify it for you. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of godliness. Later on, if you want to write down this scripture in Doctrine and Covenants 84, verse 20 to 22, God teaches Joseph in a revelation that the power of godliness is given through covenants and ordinances. So let me translate that. Joseph, they have a form of godliness. They teach about God, but they deny the power of godliness. And the power of godliness is found through covenants. In other words, he's saying the churches say that you don't need to make a covenant. And God is saying you have to make a covenant. That's where you get God's power in your life, in the covenants. Now, to help you understand that a little bit, if I could put it in maybe some terms that you might understand. God is saying it's not enough to say I love you. God is saying I want you to say I will marry you. It's not enough just to say, I'm dating. It, we, you and I have to say, I've committed my entire life to him. And the way you show you've committed your life to him is through an ordinance or an outward ceremony. It's kind of like when my wife and I got married. I affectionately call her my sweatheart. How did I commit my life to my sweatheart, to my wife? Well, we had a ceremony. And we made a covenant through authority that bound us to each other. And we were no longer Anthony and Cindy. We were now the sweats. We became one. We became joined through a covenant. The most unromantic name ever, the perspirations. We even, part of the reason why people change names when they get married is to signify that oneness. Now, here's the great thing. When I married my wife, my wife is really, really good at so many things that I am not good at. Um, she has so many qualities that I don't have. But the great thing is when we join our lives, all of her strengths become mine. And all of my one strengths become hers. That's kind of like how our marriage works. Wait, I'm kind of driving in reverse here. We become one. So it doesn't matter that I'm not good at this because she is. That, and I still get that blessing in my life. Or that I can't do some of the things that she does because she can. And I still get that blessing in my life. And the same thing for a few things that I can do for her. Now, one of the biggest uh, metaphors that Christ used to explain our relationship with him is marriage. He says, uh, I am married unto you. He calls us his bride, and he is the bridegroom. And the only question is, how do you and I get married to Jesus? And you'll see where this is coming in in a second. I one time was having a discussion with a Protestant minister. It was a really great discussion. I've shared this story a lot because it was a great discussion. And it was a great moment of clarity for me. He said to me, why do Mormons think that they have to do all these things to be saved? And I said, like what? And he said, like paying tithing and going to church and, and doing, you know, all, all the stuff that you say that people have to do, going on missions. And, and, and he said, Mormons have to do all these works to be saved. And I said, no, we, we, don't, we don't think that those works save us. It's only Christ that saves us. And he said, well, the Mormons believe in being saved by grace, by Christ's grace. That's in other words, do you believe in being saved by Christ's help? Or do you think you do it yourself? And I said, well, of course, of course. And I showed in the Book of Mormon uh, that it's only by the merits and mercy and grace of the Holy Messiah that we are saved. Um, and I said, of course, we are only saved by Christ's grace. I could go to church if it ever started again uh, for wherever you live. I could go to church 12 hours a day. I could help every old lady across the street. I could pay 20% tithing. Uh, I could submit a thousand names to the temple and none of those things will save me. None of them, not a one of them. Uh, it's only the grace of Christ that saves me. And he said, well, why do you do those things then? I said, well, we do them because we love Christ. It's a way of showing our commitment to him. 
and a way of showing our love to him. And because he's asked us to. And he said, well, then what do you think? Uh, I, uh, he says, well, what does somebody have to do to be saved then? And I said, all they have to do is live the gospel. And he said, well, what's the Mormon definition of the gospel? And I said, faith in Christ, repentance, where, so let me explain, faith that we believe that Jesus is the way of salvation. Repentance, meaning we try to line our life up with his teachings. Baptism, meaning we make a covenant with him. And then we receive his spirit. We try to let that spirit in our life and follow it. And that if we will do those things in our life, we will be saved. And he said, that's works. He says, that's a gospel of works. And I said, why is it a gospel of works to you? And he said, because the moment you ask anybody to do anything, that means they have to do certain works to be saved. And I said, well, what do you think somebody has to do to be saved? And he said, the moment that they accept Christ in their heart or confess him with their lips, they will be saved. And I couldn't help but right when he said that, I said, works, brother. And he goes, no, 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 don't you call that a gospel of works? And I said, well, why not? If you can call my covenant a work, I can call your acceptance of Christ in your heart a work or your confession a work. You still have to do something. And he said, no, it's what Christ is doing to me. And I said, it's what Christ is doing to me. And I had a moment of clarity. And the moment of clarity, I said to him, I said, my brother, the only difference between you and I is you believe in salvation through a confession. And I believe in salvation through a covenant. You believe that Christ's grace comes through accepting him. And I believe that a fullness of Christ's grace comes through committing our lives to him through a covenant. And that was helpful for both of us because it helped us see our different positions. Now, I hope that's helpful for you because if you understand again, Joseph, uh, the Lord said to Joseph, I'm going to establish a new covenant in section 22 of the Doctrine and Covenants. He said, this church has been on earth so that a new covenant can be established. He calls the Book of Mormon a sign of the new covenant. When you read the Book of Mormon, the title page says that one of the reasons why it's been made known is so that the covenants of the fathers can be given again. Uh, this, the restoration has been summarized of a restoration of the covenants of Abraham. So I want to say boldly to you, you and I believe in salvation through the grace of Christ, through a covenant with him. And if you have made a covenant commitment to him, you will be saved in the celestial kingdom of God. If that covenant has been made by proper priesthood authority, it doesn't matter if you are perfect at keeping that covenant, none of us are. It doesn't matter if you have flaws, we all do. It doesn't matter if you have sins, we all commit them. It doesn't matter if you die in an imperfect state, because we all will. Isn't that exciting? Isn't that refreshing? What I want to say to you is you are not trying to qualify yourself for heaven. You're trying to qualify yourself for Christ, and Christ will take you to heaven. That's totally different. Um, you are not going to go into heaven on your resume. You're going to go into heaven on Christ's resume. And as uh, was said in the introduction, you have to make sure you're on Christ's team, that his name is on you. And at the last day, Jesus is going to say, okay, who has taken my name upon them? Well, she has, she has, he has, he has. All of those are saved on my merits, is what Christ says. Section 45 of the Doctrine and Covenants, verse 3 to 5, says that Christ will say to the Father, Look at these who believe on my name, uh, that they may come unto me and have everlasting life. Moroni 10.32, come unto Christ and be perfected in him. Doctrine and Covenants 76, verse 53, I believe. That in the celestial kingdom are just, just men and women, normal people, made perfect in Christ. If you're not understanding this, let me give you a math metaphor. What's, what's one plus infinity? It's infinity. What's 30 plus infinity? It's infinity. Hey, math geniuses, what's 90 plus infinity? 
It's infinity. Um, it doesn't matter. You cannot take away from infinity. And what do we call Christ's merits? We call them infinite. It's an infinite atonement. Second Nephi 9. Well, what's the one? What's the 30? What's the 60? What's the 90 in the equation? That's us. The scriptures say some people have one talent. Some people have five. Some people have 10. Some people produce 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 90-fold. Some are 11th hour laborers and work for one hour. Some work for 12 hours. It doesn't matter. It's 30 plus infinity. The question is, what's the plus? The plus in that equation. What joins us with Jesus? It's a covenant. It is a covenant. And if you are joined by a covenant, you will be saved by Jesus. This is Elder D. Todd Christofferson. He said, quote, our access to God's power is through our covenants with him. In these divine agreements, God binds himself to sustain, sanctify, and exalt us in order for our return commitment to serve him. Listen to what Elder Christofferson, an apostle, just said. Through a covenant, God gives us his power to sanctify and exalt us because of our commitment to serve him. So why should this help you? Number one, if any. Anybody suffers from perfectionist syndrome out there, um, this should help. I can't do perfect, um, but I can do loyal. Christ asks for loyal commitment to him, not perfect following of him. I can't perfectly keep the commandments, but I can recommit to him. Like in my, in my relationship with my wife, in our marriage, I'm one with her. I'm not a perfect husband, but I can be a loyal husband. I make mistakes, and when I do, I call my wife or I talk to her and I say, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. In marriage, we call that an apology. In the gospel, we call that repentance. Um, uh, if you will do those things, sisters and brothers, I promise you, you are going to heaven. Let me ask you four simple questions. Well, five. Number one, do you trust that Jesus is the way to be saved, that he can save you? Number two, do you uh, try your very best? Do you try to align your life with what he teaches? That's called repentance. Number three, do you love Jesus so much that you're willing to make a commitment by a covenant to, to bind your life to him and take his name upon you? That's called baptism or a renewal of it through the sacrament. And number four, do you try to listen to the Holy Ghost? Do you try to follow it and what it's guiding you to do? And are you currently doing those things right now in your life? If you said yes, 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 that means you're living the gospel. And worlds without end, you will go to the celestial kingdom because Christ promises to do that to you. So I want you to go forward with faith in Christ, with confidence in him. If somebody says to you, do you think you're going to heaven? I want you to say yes. I want you to say amen. I want you to say hallelujah. I want you to say praise the Lord. We can never glory too much in him. Now, don't be like, that's cocky. No, you're not saying it of yourself. That's not confidence in yourself. That's confidence in Christ. Kind of like our Protestant brothers and sisters that I admire. And then last, the last reason why it should really affect you is because you've said to him, I am married to him. Just like I have said, I am married to my wife. I've committed my life to her. Now what do I do? I go forward every day trying to renew that love, trying to show that love, trying to deepen that love. And um, in a spiritual metaphor, uh, I, I, don't, I don't serve my wife because I think it what makes her love me. She chooses to love me. That's a gift from her, and I'm so grateful for that. I choose to serve my wife because I love her, because I want to show her that I love her. And I think you can make the spiritual connection there. Um, let that, let, that, that's called the gift of hope, by the way. And as I conclude, I'll say that. I hope you can have the gift of hope. The gift of hope is when the Spirit says to you, because you are a covenant child of Christ, he will save and exalt you. He'll take you to the social kingdom in spite of your weaknesses and imperfections. Now go forward doing your best, 
trying to serve him because you love him, not because you're trying to earn your way to heaven or earn his love in some way. Testify to you, Christ is the way, the truth, the life. Testify to you, the priesthood is real that can bind you to him through a covenant. And I testify he will save all of us who believe on his name. And I leave that in the name of our Lord and our Savior, who is mighty to save, even Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks, Anthony. That was so great. Uh, one thing that stood out to me a lot um, that I'd never thought of before is when you said um, that we don't about not qualifying, quit worrying about uh, qualifying for heaven, but to qualify for Christ. And that's just, I love that feeling. Um, I love the thought of that because he will be the one that takes us to heaven. That's just such a beautiful thing to imagine and, you know, making and keeping these covenants, we are closer to Christ. And I think that's a little bit more of a relationship that we can think about, you know, where heaven might be a little bit overwhelming to think about. But if we just think about the Savior and how we want to be with him, and then he'll let it, he'll help us along. I think that's just beautiful. So oh, thank you. Thank you so much for your message tonight. That was just perfect. You're welcome. Um, we appreciate you. Um, if anybody has any questions for Anthony, you can leave them in the in the comments section below. We will answer them following the when the fireside's done, then we're gonna have a QA session. So um yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Any comments or any questions that you have about what Anthony said or what Chad's going to say. We're going to introduce Chad in just a second. But um, that's why we love to do these live events is so that we can reach out to those people that are seeking help and and maybe provide them with an answer that they're prayerfully seeking. So anyway, thanks again. And um, anyway, we will introduce Chad He's been backstage waiting for us, so we're excited to have Chad back. We missed him last week. He's been a part of all of our firesides this uh, since we started doing them, and we missed him last week. Um, so and the and and the week before, right? So was it no? Just no, just one. No, just, just one. one. I've done it before. Okay. All right. I was like, oh, yeah. it feels but like it makes me feel good. It makes me feel good that you think it's been two weeks. That makes me feel really good. And we miss I don't you. want to follow Anthony. I don't want that was backwards. <laughs> I don't want to follow that. I mean, he did great. Let's, let's, we gotta, who, who's the scheduler? Who decides that stuff? <laughs> I, just, I, 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 I'm not. I mean, he's quoting verses in scripture, and then he tells me that I have to do some work and that faith. I mean, Protestants so much easier. Does it? I, I just think he needs to understand that. I just think it's so much easier. Yeah, no kidding. Sorry, Matt. Yeah, I'm sorry for babbling. No, I'm you're not. fine. I'm you're sorry. Just fine. We're glad you're here. Um, I'm excited to to host this event with you here. I can kind of brag about you a little bit. I was investigating some interesting facts about you that I didn't know. Um, oh, well, don't we? Um, I, I know you. I know you're you're such a humble man, and I uh, I kind of like to talk about these things, but. Chad is a uh, Hall of Fame speaker. He was one of the, one of the youngest to ever receive that award. Um, fake news. That's not fake news. Wall Street Journal considers Chad to be one of the top ten most influential Are people. Are you serious? In the world. Yes. Fake news. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> and then, but you know, my favorite part and Chad's favorite part probably is that he's married to Shondell. Uh, they have four amazing children. He's an author. He's a life coach, a presenter. He owns uh, Royal Creek Ranches, a big, huge elk farm, and they have all kinds of, you know, events there and do all kinds of things there. The new thing that I found out about Chad today was in 2003, he set a world record by wheeling his chair from Salt Lake to Las Vegas. That was not fake news. That was just, that was really stupid. That was dumb. I um that was the we um I have forgotten about that sin until you just brought it up and I have repented. And so I don't know why you have to bring up things in my past. I mean, we just got done listening to let's just start. Okay. Well, anyway, we're so grateful for all that Chad has done for us to he's a, been a big motivator to do these firesides for us. And 
Um, one of the most amazing presenters, humble men you'll ever meet. So turn the time over to Chad Hymas. Thanks, Mandy Shane. Thanks for hosting this. I love Onward Productions. Huge shout out to Shane and Mandy Johnson. I love Anthony Sweat. Do you guys know that um, out of all of, and we do a lot of Onward Productions um, firesides, which I love, but Anthony, um, when I spoke with him last time, um, and you look at, you can see like where people come on and they, you know, where, where, where people do the thumbs up or they send a heart. And I spoke with Anthony last time. And out of all the people that I've shared on our productions with, by like Anthony's getting all these, these thumbs ups and these hearts. And then, and then Mandy turns it over to Chad Hymas. And then it just kind of plateaus a little bit because I don't know how you follow him because he just, and, and, and I don't agree with some of the things that he said. I'm just going to be honest. I, uh, he talked about, um, I do agree with faith, faith and works. Got to have that. But, but he said, Anthony said that, um, that a lot of people believe terrestrial. They're going to go to the terrestrial kingdom. And, and, and that's where Anthony and I are. We're going to have an argument. I mean, we, we might have to get him back on because, I just don't see it. I mean, I just, I don't, and celestial, overwhelming, that's an understatement. I just, I just think that sometimes life is so hard and, um, and, and I think that I married an angel. Shondell's going to heaven for sure. And so here's my plan of action, Anthony. And I think um, maybe you can give me a thumbs up. I'll be able to see it. I, I'm, whenever I look down, I'm just seeing who's online. So just before I go into Shondell, I just want to just give a huge shout out to some people that I'm seeing. I'm our, I'm our, so Vancouver, Washington, uh, Dunford family. Thank you. I want to say hi to just, just, I can see it. So just tell me where you're coming from and I'll see your name. I just want to say hi to you guys. I, I love seeing your faces via the text that I see on Facebook live and on YouTube. I got them both. I got YouTube right here and I got Facebook. So I just want to say hi to you. So Kitty, hello, David. Hello. Um, Jennifer looks like I got two Jennifers. Hello. Uh, Kana Kanaya from Honolulu. Hello. That is awesome. We got some people from Tooele watching. Looks like we got Alpine Academy. The girls, again, from Alpine are watching. So that's cool. So, no, just type it right there. I just want to say hello to you guys and see where you're coming from. And, oh, yeah, yeah. So post, let me know where you're coming from. Um, we got uh, Mandy from, Shelly's coming from Ephraim. Mandy's coming from uh, Virginia. Katie, hello. Um, thank you guys for watching tonight. Let me go back to this celestial, telestial thing. I, I just, I think I've been made some critical error and I think that Anthony spoke very solid principle and truth. I just sometimes don't think that I'm worthy of the terrestrial or the telestial. And maybe some of you can relate to that. Um, I'll give you a couple more things. I like it warm. I just... I don't know why I live in Utah. I mean, it's so cold. and Sometimes the temperature is nice. I got to have it hot to keep my blood warm. So, you know, a lot of fire down there, they say. And it's not in the scripture per se. I mean, fire and brimstone, that's in scripture. So maybe I think it's going to be warm in the telestial kingdom. And I, uh, and, and really, my I know I should probably have higher goals, but me being married to an angel, I'll show you. I mean, you don't even have to know her. I don't. I, I want to make sure that I don't discredit Anthony. I'm just saying, when you're married to somebody like this, good luck. I mean, my plan right now that I've journalized, Anthony, um, I, 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 I probably won't make it to the celestial. I know you said that I have a great shot at it, but hard for me to soak that in. And terrestrial uh, i just it just that's average and i know i need to shoot above average but it just sometimes seems out of my realm telestial the highest degree i still think is going to have green fields and lots of water and all my re my request is i just want to be i just want to be uh, i just want to be her servant i know i know that's low standards i know i should i know i should want to be her husband and and be her celestial partner and I, that's probably where I, everybody else is aiming for, but for me, I just think that she has served me so much the last 20 years. I am. Um, I just want to be her, her garden keeper. You know, I just want to plant flowers and, and, and give her the greenhouse that she doesn't have time to do herself because she's always helping me. I, um, Anthony, I know you'll speak the truth. I felt it. I just, sometimes it's just hard for me to live it. And so thank you for the reassurance. 
Thank you for the scriptures that you shared, brother. Thank you for um, being on a higher level than me so that I can raise my standards and raise my confidence and uh, and and have have your your content and your testimony to fight depression with and to fight suicidal. I mean, suicide is not even an option for me um, because I just don't. I think that is the most demeaning thing that we could do. Um, truly, I gotta make myself at least credible to uh, be in His kingdom, and I, I I can't take my life. But to say that that thought hasn't crossed my mind um, uh, early on when I broke my neck would be a lie. Uh, today, not an option at all. I do have an eternal family to live live for. I'm certainly going to give it my best effort. I loved your comment about uh, works. We got to have works and the covenants we make in the temple. So now I'm kind of going back on what I said about Telestial and saying that I'm going to shoot for Celestial. Really, uh, brothers and sisters, Celestial is the only option. Um, Christy, hi. Um, I just why wipe off my boogers in my eyes. I just want to say hi to some people and forgive me for let me, I, I got to crack jokes. Otherwise, I'll start crying. So I got I got to laugh a little bit. Um, I, uh, oh, Aleth from the. Are you joking me? The Philippines? We I served my mission in Thailand, so I just right above you. Not celestial above you, just I was above you in the Philippines a little bit. So and Babby from Pocatel Poco, Pocatello. Um po, you're a poke, uh, potato person. I, thank you for being with us. They're the right most righteous people in the world, I think. Share Wellsville. Love Wellsville. That's cowboy country. Love that. And Chad Hunt. Um well, I, I Chad Hunt lives right down the road from me. I didn't know he's going to be watching tonight. I got to be careful how I talk about Chad Hunt. Um, I don't know if it's him watching or his kids, but if it's your if it's your kids, if you if I got the kids on the on, on the line tonight or Corey his wife, can I just thank you for uh, tonight's tonight's message is living his name, you know, Christ's name. I'm sure Chad Hunt is not perfect. That guy would give the shirt off his back for somebody like me. That guy has served me down here on the farm, has helped me transfer when I've been home alone. Uh, two nights ago, I had a broken pipe on the farm. I can't get out there and fix it myself. And I, to be honest, I wasn't even around. But I got some text messages saying, hey, your pipe's broken. Without even hesitating, Chad Hunt, just, he, just, he had that thing fixed by 10 o'clock at night. I didn't, I, I'm not exact. 10 o'clock at night. So if he's spending time fixing my pipe on my field, that time is being taken away from Corey, his wife, and his children. If his children are watching tonight, please watch your mother and your father very closely because they are about as Christ-like people as I have ever met in my life. Here's my message tonight. It's going to be short, simple, brief. Tonight, we are supposed to be talking about, oh, geez, more people are on. I, uh, I I know. I just want to say hello to all of you. I love you all. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining. And thanks for giving Anthony all those nice hearts and thumbs up. I don't see any there for me, but that's all right. I'm cool with it. I, I know you were, we're with Anthony tonight. But tonight, I got to go to this. I got to go, and I got to ask you guys a favor. Forgive me for the, I don't, I don't really cry. Too. When I cry, more comes out of my nose. I, I know it's kind of gross, but. More comes out of my nose than my eyes, and so I just uh, use uh, my my hand because there's nobody in here that could catch COVID, and then I just it's kind of wipe it on the. I have a little rag right there, and so anyway, um, so tonight we have to talk about taking His name upon us. So here's why I need your help. I need you to type this in as fast as it comes to your head. What is His name? I, I'm, I'm I'm dead serious. What is His name? What is Christ known by in the Scriptures? Tell me what comes to your mind, and I'm just going to read them off. I'm waiting. I'm waiting, you guys. Type it in. What is Christ known? What, 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 what is he called by the prophets, by his dad, by Heavenly Father? What is his? So if we're supposed to take upon him or his name, what the heck is it? Why, I, I need to know that first. Not just Jesus, not just Christ. What's he called? What's he known by? I, I need you to answer. And I'll just sit here and wait. Oh, here we go. I got. Okay, so somebody said master. LB, thank you. King, yes, he's called a king in the scriptures for sure. Thank you. Um, Prince of Peace, Abby, thank you. Eleanor said, Savior, good. Comforter, there's another good one. Light of the world, you guys are good. Listen to what you're, listen to what you're writing. Mandy, you should type these in and put it in the chat so that they can see this and so they can get all. So I got Master, King, Prince of Peace, Savior, Comforter. Sorry, I know I'm speaking a little bit fast. Um, just stay with me on this. I'll just send it to you by text. 
Light of the world. That one. He's called the light of the world. That means when the sun's out, he's watching us. And when darkness is out, maybe that's when we probably should be on our best behavior. I'm sure he's still watching us when it's dark too, but a lot of, a lot of sins committed after curfew. We need to be careful after curfew. So that's not my message. Again, my question, what is his name? What is his name? Please send me, send me your answers. What is creator? I got, I already got creator. Jehovah. Good. Bread of life. Good. Redeemer. You guys are thinking now you're digging deeper. Um, the only, that one's good. James, the only begotten. The mediator. That's one I haven't thought of. The great mediator. So he is between us and the Father, helping us with that discussion that Anthony talked about. Helping us be able to live with him. You know, Chad might have committed some sins here, and he might have said some bad words here, and his last words might have been bad words, but his heart... I'm not talking about Chad Hunt, but I'm talking about this Chad, Chad Hyman. Sorry. Don't be confused about that. He, he's the mediator. He's the one that has the credibility to say, you know what? I like where, I like where James was. I like where Samantha was in her life, her progress. Father, let me atone for him. I love that. The great mediator. That, that was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Wait, wait. I, I, thanks for saying. Servant. Absolutely servant. He's known as a prophet. And the last one, I'll just share this one. I know there's more coming in, but we don't have time for one more. He's the advocate with the Father. So he's advocating for us, just like Anthony said. And yes, the celestial kingdom, as much as I joke about me not making it, I've got no other goal but the celestial kingdom, you guys. And, and if I'm willing to take upon me all of those names, Master, King, Prince of Peace, Savior, comforter. And if I can try and live a couple of those to the best of my ability, I, I didn't say all of them. I mean, I can't redeem other people's sins, but I can forgive others myself. I can't create worlds, but I can be creative in the way I raise my kids and the way that I talk and the way that I respond back to adversity instead of using swear words or profanity. I can be creative there. Be a prince of peace. Am I a peacemaker or a troublemaker? We, we should ask ourselves that. What is Christ's name? And if we're supposed to take upon ourselves his name, just look at what you guys said to me. I didn't type this in. You guys said this to me. You, you guys said master. I don't know that I need to be somebody else's master, but what kind of leadership skills am I developing? Am I somebody that people can look up to? And am I hanging around good people? Or am I the kind of master that makes other people fearful, doubt, and have uncertainty? That's the definition of master. It doesn't mean you have to whip people or lead or not talking about somebody on a horse whipping a, a cow. Master is all about leadership. What's leadership? It's not position or title. It's not the captain of the basketball team or the volleyball team or the valedictorian. Or master is not even a president of a country or the United States. I'm not my master. Master is demonstrating behavior that makes other people better. When the lady saw him after he died, she said, Adonai, master, because he made her be better. Are we masters of our fate? Am I, am I the master of my decision? Again, remember what I said in the beginning about, I'm going to change cameras here, guys, just so I can get look at some more views. So I'm just going to go over here. Now I can see better. I can see some names on the screen. Plus, I look better in this camera and and my lipstick doesn't show so much. Um, master, are we willing to do, light of the world? Am I a light in my home? Do I bring that light? Am I taking upon, because every time I go to church and I take that bread and that water, it says they're right there in both the bread and the water, willing to take upon ourselves the name of thy son and always remember him. And keep his commandments, which he has given them, that they may always have his spirit to be with them. These are the names that we should be thinking of when we take the bread and the water. When I take that bread and water, I should be thinking, okay, am I being a good leader? Uh, this, am, I, am I trying to be a prince of peace in my home and, and to my friends? Uh, 
as I take the water, you know, a drink of his blood, his name. Am, am I trying to be, am I trying to be like the only begotten? I know that he is truly the only begotten, but am I doing the best I can to be charitable? Uh, uh, unconditional love, uh, Christ-like love. My wife, am I trying to be like her? Because she has that natural gift. Me, I, I tend to get most angry when she helps me. I, uh, I know that sounds selfish. It is. She, I don't want to get off topic, but, but my biggest challenge in life, and it's been this way for the last few months since COVID, is not COVID. My biggest challenge is not hiding behind a hotel room somewhere because I, I used to travel a lot, you know. And so when Mandy and Shane... Actually, Shane and Mandy, we just call them Shandy to make it shorter. When Shandy came up with this topic, it made me think of taking the bread and the water. And when I say, and take upon myself his name, that I might always remember him and keep his commandments, I'm thinking, who is he? And you guys just answered that for me. You just you said, well, Chad, he's the master, he's the king, he's the prince of peace, he's the savior. Eleanor said he's a comforter. James said he's light of the world. Chris said he's the great Jehovah. Uh, Samantha, bread of life. Uh, Chris, the only begotten, mediator, servant, prophet, the advocate with the Father. That's what you guys gave me. That's what I should be thinking about when I take the bread and water. In order for you to understand why I'm so passionate about taking upon ourselves his real names, his names, plural, all of his names, I need to take you back to a talk I heard. Can you guys write this down for me? Write it. Don't forget it. Go look it up as soon as we're done. We'll be done in just a few minutes. We'll be done. Go look up a talk on Utah by Elder Holland. And the talk is called, Aren't or Are We All Beggars? Or just type in Elder Holland hyphen beggars. B-E-G-G-A-R-S. Beggars. He gave a talk on that. And he wasn't talking about us going out and begging for food or for money or the homeless. He wasn't talking about necessarily, although he used that as a metaphor. He was saying, aren't we all beggars in that come the time that Anthony Sweat was talking about when we die? That was it. That was his first question to all of you. He says, where are you going to go when you die? Well, I don't think I'm going to be asked what church I went to. I don't think I'm going to be asked that. That's just me. I don't know for sure, but I don't think so. And I don't think he's going to ask me how many times did I go to church. And I know he's not going to say, were you a stake president or a bishop? I know he's not going to ask me that. I know he's not going to ask me where I served my mission. And I know he's not going to ask me if I served a mission. I truly believe that. He is going to say, did you live according to my name? Were you kind to your wife? Or did you push her away at times? Well, I'm going to have to answer the truth. Yeah, there were some times I didn't like her help. I'm sorry. She, she helped me get through that. Last two months, I've been really good, by the way. Best behavior. I'm not grounded anymore. I got my cell phone back, too. And I don't even have to self-quarantine. She, and she also took the chalks off my wheelchair. So now I have some freedom. So I, but, but for a couple months, you know, I was chalked up. I was kind of locked up. I had to wear an orange suit. I, I, just, I, wasn't, I just I wasn't doing good. I was like in prison. It was, although prison's not a bad thing because that's where we refine ourselves. And I know what it feels like to be in prison. I felt like I've been there many, many times. I'm not talking about speaking. I'm not, I know what it feels like to be trapped. I am no better of a person than those people that are serving as prison inmates trying to refine themselves. He is going to ask me if I served under his name. Elder Holland said we will all beg for his advocacy, just like you said it. Anthony, you said it. Are we, We're going to beg him to be our advocate with the Father. That's his name. Will you please atone for my sins so I can become part of the celestial kingdom? So check this out. Because Anthony was spot on in his numbers and his stats and in his belief of most people. Terrestrial beliefs. That's our goal or that's our beliefs. Be careful with your beliefs because that will dictate your goals and your actions. So if we just believe that we're going to get to the terrestrial and that's the only thing that's really feasible and realistic, we're going to set goals that get us to the terrestrial. If we set celestial goals, we are allowing ourselves and putting ourselves in a greater place of potential to re receive celestial glory. So what do you believe? Because if I believe telestial, I'm just going to keep sitting by the heater. 
And I'm going to light a fire and I'll sit close to it and think, all right, this is where it's going to be right here. This is, this is it right here. If I'm thinking terrestrial, I'm just going to be average. And I don't think that God made us to be average. Be the best version of you, President Hinckley said. Don't be anybody else. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. Be the best version of you. Sarah, I'm talking to you. Matthew, Ryan, Britt, Carly, the Hunt family. I'm talking, I'm talking Philippines, Idaho, Colorado Springs, Denver, North Carolina, Virginia, all of you. I'm talking. What do you believe? Because whatever, whatever you believe is going to dictate your actions. And if you're ready to become a master of your fate, or if you're going to leave that up to somebody else, are you willing to be a person of peace, a pr prince of peace, or a princess of peace? Are you willing to be a savior? I'm not asking you to die on a cross. Or what's it, what does savior mean? It means be willing to give up like Chad Hunt. He got off his tractor, his field. And he went and worked on my field. That's a savior. He got off his field and went over to my field and fixed pipe till 10 o'clock at night. I'm just saying. I guess the reason why sometimes my belief system is terrestrial or telestial is because I can't physically pay him back. Oh, I asked him. And I already know I can't physically go help him bail his hay. And I can't. I can't throw a hay for him or I can't help him brand his cows. So I asked him on the phone two nights ago, you know, when our pipe broke, I, I said to Chad Hunt, I said, hey, you know, what do I owe you for the parts? Because he used his parts on our field, his pipe. He used his pipe and stuff uh, to fix it. He said, no, no, don't worry about a thing. I got you covered. I hope I have a belief system strong enough that the Savior says, like Chad Hunt, don't worry about it. I got you covered. Chad, I'm talking about me now. Chad, I'm, I know you made a mistake, and several actually, but I know you had a hard time having your wife help you. Thank you for changing your belief system and telling her that you were grateful. Thank you for brushing her hair. I know that sounds, I'm just, you know, I, I started brushing her hair two months ago. We've been married for 25 years. I started two months ago. Chad, thank you for participating in what she wanted to do, her, her come follow me and her scripture study. Can you believe I've taken that for granted for 25 years? I'm sorry, that's not true. The first five years, we were good at that and did all those things. And I brushed her hair too. I, I, I didn't do laundry though. No laundry. I, I, I didn't do laundry. And I didn't do diapers. No, not one. And But I don't think God's going to, I hope God's not going to ask. I, no diapers. I just don't do diapers. Um, but did I put myself in a belief system, a place of potential to do everything that Anthony Sweat taught us tonight? After Ellen Elder Holland gave his talk about beggars, I went down to Temple Square on a Monday. He gave his talk on a Sunday. And I dressed up as a beggar in a wheelchair. But so that was already done because I'm already in a chair, you know. Got a cardboard sign that said, Do unto others as you'd have done unto you. And I put on a beanie hat and I had some money hidden in my hat. Okay. $20 bills. I got some pictures. You guys got to check this out. Look at this. I went and played homeless. Oh, at the very, very place where Elder Holland gave his talk. So these are peoples that listen to a prophet or an apostle teach. And the next day I go and just see if they heard that powerful message. And this is what I, I mean, this is what it looked like. You guys got to check this out. I'm going to wrap it up right here. Check it out. There I am. How many of us just walk right on by? Now, don't judge the people in the dress. I get it. I, you're not allowed to judge. I'm just saying, would you stop or would you not? Oh, I had another sign, too. On the other side, it said, looking for a friend. So I would swap back and forth. Looking for a friend, do others that you'd have done unto you. And I would just smile at people and I would wave in my chair, wearing blue gloves, checkered shirt, um, unbuttoned. And I had my hat on with some money um, hidden under the hat. And I'm just, again, you're not allowed to judge. 
Don't judge anybody. I'm just going to share with you some experiences. Oh, by the way, I had a two camera shoot, one on top of the conference center and one across the street, and I was fully mic'd. So I had, I had microphones on me and microphone on my wheelchair so people could, so I could make this video without condemning people. Look at this. Anthony must have, I think Anthony was right. The younger children are, the greater they are, the more likely they are to be like our Savior. And they don't think about all these little nitpicky things that prevent us from being, being, being like him. And they have no sense of false hope, just false hopelessness. Little children are curious on how they can help. Well, look, mom and dad aren't in the front. The kids are. They're the ones that walked over first. Mom and dad had to follow because here I am, a homeless person. Who knows what could happen to their kids? Now, I'm not saying you should go talk to strangers. Don't hear that message. And certainly don't do, do it on the internet. That's stupid. Look at those kids. I mean, look. Hey, what happened to you? So I told them the story. And mom and dad are just kind of sitting there listening. And one said, why is your hands curled? And so I told them, you know, about the mistake I made and that night that I got hurt. And they just started being my friend, started talking to me. And then I took off my hat and I said, I have something. That's when mom and dad stepped in. No, 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 no. They don't need anything. I said, no, 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 no. If, if, can I just finish? I'm not asking for any money or anything. I just have something for your kids. And I had, I had a bunch of $20 bills in my hat. Kids, will you take this $20 bill? And will you go find someone else to serve with it today? Please do not spend it on yourself. You'll understand how I feel now that you've talked to me when you go do that for somebody else. You don't have to use your own money. You just want it to be like the savior. Advocating somebody else. I'm going to go back to your guys' words. You guys put this, not me. Be peaceful with others. Be a light to somebody else's life. Be creative on how you do it. You know, This is what you guys. Be somebody else's Jehovah. Save them from an empty home. Visit them. Teach them. Clean up their yard. Do something with this $20 that doesn't serve your interest. Your words again. Be the bread of life to somebody. Be somebody's only begotten for the day. Go be their only begotten just, just for an hour. Be their savior. Spend time, play a game, do a puzzle. Go see the grandparents, make a phone call. Hey, Grandpa, this is Chad Hymas, just calling to say hi to you. Let you know that I was thinking about you, Grandpa. Thank you for everything you've taught me in my life. Man, I sure love you, Grandpa. I better go, bye. That's it. Be somebody else's only begotten. Look what else happened that day. We gotta wrap it up, sorry, I'm, I'm just blabbing too much. I'll just show you a couple things, the same day. There's my sign. A gal came and talked to me. Look at look at look at look at the guys in the background on their cell phone. No, no, look. I guess he's calling over to his family because look what happened next. Got some kids talking to me. Another family. Another family or some people just walking by. Wrong picture. Let's go back. That's that guy's kids. Right there. That's that guy's kids. And they started talking to me. Look, my hat's off. Look at my hat, and there's cash in my hat. There's cash. Can you see it? There's cash in my hat. So I gave each of them a $20 bill, and I said, do not go to McDonald's on this money. Don't go to Burger King. Don't go to Chick-fil-A. That one's tough, too, because that's, that's, that's very addictive. Chick-fil-A is tough. Telling kids to not go to Chick-fil-A is like telling me to not go to Costa Vida. It's very, very tempting. I just, I, I like Costa. I, 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 love, I love the food. Uh, I asked those kids to go do that. Do you have the ability to take upon him? I'm sorry, let me, re I, let me rephrase that. I'm sorry. Do you have the desire to take upon yourselves his names? I have the desire. Now I have to do it. Anthony taught us. I have to go show it. I can't just say, I believe. I believe. Yeah, I, I believe. I, I believe. I believe. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. I believe. I'm not making fun. I'm, I'm, don't, don't hear that message. I'm not. I'm just saying. That's not going to get me to my goal of the celestial kingdom to live with him. The only thing that's going to get me there is his grace and his atoning sacrifice and my works. And am I willing to do what you guys all typed in? You gave me those words tonight. May God the Father bless each and every one of you. 
may his son atone for your sins and mine. May he please forgive me for my bad attitude in March and April. Gosh, March and April were tough months for me this year. They were just tough. May was a little better. Still rough, but, but a little better. June was a good month. And July. And now it's August 1st. What a great... It's, I'm, I'm starting fresh. August 1st. I'm starting fresh. So I got a clean slate. Now I got to do what Anthony taught us tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I finish kind of fast, so they're never prepared for me. So it takes them like five minutes to get back on because we're drinking Coke. Now they're back on, so she's got to have her Coke and stuff while they're on. So I just probably finish fast. Sorry, Maddie. I'm sorry. No, you're good. Fast. Get you Anthony on here so we have some content and somebody good yeah. to get Anthony back on here. Somebody good. Oh, gosh. There we go. That was awesome, Chad. Thank you so much. Um, I, I don't know that you know this, but I remember watching the video that you had of, of, of that experiment that you did. That's how we found you. Our event. We found that video and we were just like, oh, like I want to know more about that guy. That was just amazing. So, um, um, anyway, I love that. I loved what you said about having everybody type those words because that ultimately what we're trying to do is be like our savior with all those words and names. Um, if we try to do those things every day, then we will be fulfilling that that covenant of taking His name upon us. I love it. So, anyway. Anthony, thanks for coming back on here. Yeah. I, love that, uh, I love that line I got you covered. I think that uh, summarizes the concept as a whole. It's got to say that somewhere. I haven't found it yet, Anthony, but I think it says in Scripture somewhere, I got you covered. It's, it's got to be. I'm still looking for it. It's in section 139 of the Doctrine and Covenants. Go look for it. I knew it. you'd know, buddy. I knew you of all people would know. Go look at 139, uh, or it's in 5th uh, Nephi, one of the two. Well, I I love it. Goes back to Brad Wilcox's talk about grace, like that. Jesus isn't doesn't make up the difference. He is the difference. Yeah, the dog. Don't be quiet. The dog's bearing his testimony. <laughs> That's <laughs> told be you. Quiet. With the Johnsons, it's a crazy zoo here. <laughs> All good. We love it. Anthony and I love it. Oh, anyway, so thank you so much, you two. I had a question. What's Chad's favorite food from Costa Vida? Oh, are you joking? Um, no. I love the nachos, no sour cream, no, no, um, no, no guac. And I love the um, tacos, the, the salad that they use <laughs> and chicken. I'm not part of the chicken. Um, yeah, and I probably would have taken that 20 because that because coast is not very expensive, like seven eight bucks I can get that, and I would have spent the other eleven dollars probably on somebody else, but, but but I don't know for sure because no one asked me that. But. All right, what about you, Anthony? What's your favorite place to eat? Oh, I, I we're gonna get into a, a modern Mexican throwdown right here. I'm a I'm a Cafe Rio guy through and through. <laughs> That's so wrong. See now we're gonna battle. Now we're gonna bet that we again. Talk, see, don't give you, don't, celestial again, but I know which one's celestial. Don't you? Don't you get diarrhea when you eat there? I'm just. I, 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 maybe I shouldn't be so bold, I, and we shouldn't I, be promoting other restaurants here. We should probably shouldn't be doing that. But I'm just I, saying, just be careful. Take take I, an emodium; it'll harm you a little bit. My nickname for Costa Vida is Costa Barfa. Sorry, Chad. Oh. <laughs> see, now. Now you're, we're going to get phone calls from the general authorities tomorrow. I know. Not supposed to be, I know. We got to stop. Brad Wilcox. Brad's going to be calling. He's, 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 in the, he's in the presidency now. So he's going to be calling you nice and, hey, don't say McDonald's. Don't say Taco Bell. Don't say Costa. Don't say Regis. Can't say that stuff. Anymore. Closed, closed on Sundays. Let's just agree on that one. Closed on Sundays. <laughs> closed on Sundays. Deal. There. Sorry. Um, speaking of Brad. We have Brad Wilcox next week uh, on our fireside, so be sure to tune back in. We'll have Brad and Chad will be with us again, and Gainalyn Connie is going to be our host. So um, I'm not speaking of Brad. Be awesome. So we're excited about that. It's going to be kind of like a homecoming for Brad. We 
miss having him speak at our events with us, but we're so excited for the things that he's doing uh, and going to be doing with the Young Men's General Presidency. What an awesome opportunity and calling for him. We're, we love him. So anyway, I uh, was wondering, Chad, would you say our closing prayer and then we can be finished? Our Father in heaven, we come before this Sabbath, uh, Sabbath evening, grateful to be able to come uh, uh, unto thee and, and share a message virtually through the airwaves, this technology that uh, seemed impossible just a few decades back. Um, we're grateful for all those that took the time to listen um, tonight. And instead of doing something else, they're here hanging out with us and, and, and hopefully learning something and sharing with us in return. I, I am so grateful for those that participated tonight and helped me with some things I need to take a think about. And so grateful for Anthony and uh, you know Brother Sweat and his knowledge of the gospel, his context, the way that he comes across and his gifts. Father, we're grateful for the Johnsons uh, for having this this vision and then not letting it pass them by. Um, and, and lastly, Father, we just want to, we're just grateful for an atoning sacrifice for our Savior. Uh, help us to be worthy of that, please. In his name, Jesus the Christ, amen. 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 Thanks, guys. Have a great Thank night. You, Thanks, guys.